All right, my friends, welcome to the Black Diamond Call for Monday, December 19th, 2016. I am excited to be here with all of you. This is John Levenia calling in live from Salt Lake City, Utah. And we're going to have a fun call this evening. It's, uh, well, it's cold here in Salt Lake City. I just got back from Los Angeles. I was uh, out there for the weekend. Got to experience um, uh, some warmer weather. And now I'm back in the winter wonderland, getting ready for the holidays. This is going to be our final Black Diamond Call before the holidays. So it's, uh, it's an exciting call for me. I'm going to be hosting, uh, looks like I'm going to be hosting solo here tonight. I was, uh, as in last week as well, I was expecting to have somebody out here. But it looks like the holidays tend to cause some uh, random stuff in terms of people's schedules. So uh, the point is, though, that I'm here, which can't get any more thrilling than that, right? Especially for our new people. If you don't know who I am, uh, me, John Lavinia, I've been around the direct sales uh, world for some decades, uh, successful in it for about 15 years out of those decades. And, uh, and yes, it's been, uh, it's been an interesting ride. And the point of this call is to show you some of the ideas and strategies that top earners use to get to the top, right? How did we go from newbie, right, because none of us were born into this, Right, we all had to learn. I mean, my goodness, the internet wasn't even around, you know, when uh, when I was, I guess, 20 or so. Uh, now I'm 46, but uh, you know, we've got to, we've made progress, right? And so, if we can help you to uh, to go even faster, if we can help you to shortcut the learning curve and to cut through a lot of the a lot of the BS and the, the distractions and the nonsense that holds people from uh, holds people back from reaching their goals. That's what this call is about. So uh, what you're going to hear on, on calls like, like this one we're going to have tonight is my opinion on stuff, me, John Lavinia, how I work my businesses and uh, how I run my companies, which I, I do run several, and, uh, and what I do to assist people as a coach here inside uh, Digital Altitude, people who are looking to, to reach those goals and to perhaps exit that job to create some leverage and some time freedom in their life and to do that sooner rather than later. That's what this call is about. So you're not going to hear... Uh, this call is not about like specific marketing strategies. You hear that on Wednesday night on our On the Rise training episodes. Uh, this one's more about the mindset and the why behind the how and the what. Okay, so the rules for this call are take what you like and leave the rest. Um, you know, treat it like a buffet. See how these ideas apply into your business and into your life. That which is usable for you is true for you. So that's what we want you to do on this call. And uh, and my usual disclaimer, if I say anything that offends you, you'll get over it. That's just how we roll. I, I tend to, to not put too much attention on political correctness. I just, uh, you know, whatever comes out of my mouth, we all get to hear it at the same time, including me, because I never know what I'm going to say until I hear it. Um, that being said, I do have a couple of announcements, which I should know what to say. Hold on, let me, let me pull up those announcements. Um, and my dog is clawing at me. Lucy, go lay down, girl. Go lay down. You're a good girl. So we've got a couple of announcements. Number one is that Paza is set up for members and affiliates. So if you're a new affiliate here and you're setting up, like in step eight, where you set up your, uh, your affiliate payment uh, so you can get your commissions, uh, there is a new feature called Paza, which is a third-party uh, intermediary. They, they transfer money. It's especially good for international affiliates, right, because they cross, uh, you know, over international borders. And... Um, yeah, that will uh, also assist with like wire fees and things like that. So especially if you're outside of the U.S., uh, definitely set up PESA. If you're still in the U.S., then uh, you know the ACH is still the fastest and most affordable way to get your commissions. So uh, still, that doesn't stop you from setting up PESA, just another tool in your toolbox. You can go ahead and set up an account there. And uh, secondly, our Ascend event is coming up in March, March 8th through 11th. And there's a pre-event survey that went out. You may have already received that if you have uh, already purchased your Ascent ticket. If not, get with your scale-up coach and get yourself an Ascent ticket because it is coming right up here uh, towards late winter. Great time to be in Maui, which is where we're going. And again, that is March 8th through 11th. Official registration will be uh, opening up soon, and that will be for the current ticket holders. They will have first crack at the, um, at the seats at the event. And of course, uh, once again, this is going to be a spectacular ascend as it is the first time it is being delivered here inside the Digital Altitude community. For anyone who was with us at the Marketing Mastery event in Las Vegas back in October, you know that uh, Michael loves to over-deliver. I mean, just the value that this guy provides, even with that event, which was the early bird pricing was $97. And yet, 
that was a thousand dollar event all day long. So uh, just expect some pretty awesome stuff coming up in March. So that leads us to our topic for the night. And uh, here's what I'm thinking about, my friends. I'm thinking about when I got started uh, in this industry. In fact, you know what? I want to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. It's story time with John tonight. Here's the story. And the story, uh, the moral of the story is how to make more money in less time, which is one of my favorite topics, by the way. How to make more money in less time. Is there anybody who does not want that topic? Please protest now in the chat roll and I'll switch topics. But I think, I suspect that everyone would be okay with this topic. And to uh, illuminate the topic, I will tell you a story. And this happened when I was, uh, actually I was already successful, I was already making money in the uh, in direct sales. I had uh, quit the job, I had reached my first goal of 20000 per month, which was my goal when I first got started in this, uh, in this whole business model. And uh, that was like double what I was making at my job. Now, of course, in my case, I was pretty miserable at my job. I, I was getting my pay cut three times a year. I was not having fun. I was working too many hours. It was affecting my health. Uh, for anyone who knows my history, you know that I'm into uh, weightlifting and you know physical fitness and stuff. And I was I was getting fat. I was not uh, I was not healthy. I was eating like crap, and uh, and it was not working out well. I got started in, uh, in direct sales with the goal of making uh, 20000 per month. And I was able to reach that goal in, in just three months, after years of having not reached it. So I just needed the right income vehicle. I just needed some people who could guide me and show me how to you know, really make some money. And I just keep you know, playing around with these nickel and dime opportunities that basically just landed me in that job that I didn't like. Right? Out of desperation, I had to make some money and pay some bills. Right? So that's what the job was about. So, uh, so after all that, I, I, you know, become successful. I had reached that goal. Bought myself a new car. You know, got got a little bit of stress off. You know, got a little bit of lifestyle, and then it was time to upgrade. Yes, it was time to upgrade the house that uh, that my wife and I were, were living in. We were thinking, you know, there are nicer houses in the city, and so I think uh, we're going to go shopping. Right, do a little bit of dream building. You guys have uh, heard about that. Certainly anyone who's watched uh, like the movie The Secret, you learned about the law of attraction and the idea of putting the images into your mind that which you want, right? So deliberately thinking about things that you want rather than just thinking about whatever's on TV or on the news or coming out of the mouths of your ignorant but well-meaning friends, family, and neighbors. So we started to look at bigger, better houses, and we found a house that was just framework. It was just, you know, here's the foundation, here's some, you know, some lumber, and uh, they're putting up the house, and it's up there on the hill, and it's going to be 5,400 square feet, and it's going to be gorgeous, and the gated community, and blah, blah, blah. We were thinking, wow, that, that could be a great house. That could be a great house. So we actually met with the builder, and they were saying, well, you know, we're going to, uh, we're, here's our schedule for this uh, particular house. The architect drew it. So, you know, we know exactly what we're building here because it's, you know, on a hill and there's special considerations about, uh, you know, the shape of everything and how everything fits with the land and all that. So, so all that part's done. And, you know, you can see the framework going up here. And we're about a month out from, you know, picking out the, uh, the tile and the, you know, the various fixtures, the sinks and faucets and uh, what kind of appliances are going to go in the house and all this. And uh, we were thinking, oh, so you haven't picked that out yet. No, no, we haven't picked that out yet. Now, if you guys really want this house, then you could pick it up, right? I mean, we're we're building it. We we don't care what tile goes in it. I mean, we'll we'll do whatever's you know within the budget, and uh, you know, hopefully, people like the color and and they buy it. But if you want it, I mean, you could you could pick out the tile. You could pick out the faucets. We don't care. Whatever you want. Well, how do we pick that up? Well, you got to enter contract. You see, you got to get into uh, contract on the house uh, as it stands now. And how long do we have to do that? Well, uh, about a month, right? So if you want to buy this this property, then you need to enter contract and uh, you know fifty thousand dollars. So come up with fifty grand, and uh, and then you could pick out the title. <laughs> now we've got a reason to make some money, don't we? Now again, we we were not in a, uh, a desperate situation, but you know we were we were not that uh, you know we were not that seasoned yet in, in the business world. We were kind of, we were in that phase which I would call nouveau riche. Like, oh my goodness, we're making so much money. Let's spend it. 
right? After having come out of a, more of a, a poverty condition, a lot of lack, a lot of limitation, right? Perhaps uh, I overcompensated for my impoverished youth, and you know we got into uh, you know buying lots of stuff. Well, we wanted this house, and we weren't just sitting on an extra fifty grand that we didn't know what to do with, you know, plus paying our, our normal bills. And uh, so we we now had a reason to make more money in less time. We now had a reason that we could see, right? Look at this, look at this house that's going up and look at in our mind what could be. You know what? I like those pictures in that uh, in that house magazine, right? Where it's the uh, the uh, various you know, luxury homes and you get to see pictures of the beautifully decorated you you know the houses I'm talking about. It's got the beautiful travertine tile and there's the palm tree and there's all the you know, the beautiful furniture. And you could see this in, um, I suppose, if you read like the Rob Report or, you know, some of these other interior design uh, magazines, right? You can get lots of good ideas. Well, that's the kind of stuff that we were looking at. And we knew that since the house we were living in was, you know, quite old and uh, there was no, we're not going to go ahead and rip up the tile and everything. We're, we're looking to start from scratch pretty much. Here's the perfect opportunity to do this. Right? And to command everything about the inside of that house, the way we want it. We could even pick out the color of the paint on the exterior, man. It is exactly what we would want. Right? So we now had a reason to make some money. And of course our taste was was nice taste. And so we probably want to even go above their their budget, right? We would probably want to put even more into that house than what they would do just, you know, based on spec. Right? So here we were thinking, all right, let's come up with, with even more money. And guess what happened? We came up with the money, right? We, we, uh, that month we made 70000 and uh, we gave the guy, you know, entered the contract, and here's the fifty grand, and now, uh, you know, give us the, the blank inventory list. We're going to go shopping, right? So what's the, the point of that, that whole story? The point is that when we have something palpable, something we can look at and say, this is something we could touch, this is something that could be a reality, it's very believable. I mean, look, there's the foundation, there's the framework. This is coming together with or without us. And now we've got a deadline. Now we've got a reason to make more money in less time. We've got something we're moving toward rather than, like when we first got started in the business, when I say we, I'm talking about my wife and I. She was a school teacher at the time, for those of you who know our story. She was a school teacher at the time. She was the furthest thing from an entrepreneur, although she married one, right? It wasn't like I, you know, sprang and, you know, sprang out of a cake or, you know, jumped out of the closet and said, surprise, you know, you married a, a salesman, a, an entrepreneur, a risk taker. No, I was always that. Um, but uh, here she was along for the ride. Now she was very much in the business, right? And uh, Ricky got a kick out of that. <laughs> I see the chair roll. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. And so, so yeah, it wasn't a surprise that she married an entrepreneur. Uh, in fact, when we first met, I was a struggling entrepreneur. I was running a franchise. It was taking up all my time. I was miserable and, and all this. So, uh, so the point is that we're going, uh, we're going forward with all this. But when we first got started, it was more about trying to get out of circumstances that we didn't like. So that lack and limitation, that was the, the initial motivator to attempt to accomplish more, okay? So we're moving away from circumstances we didn't like, okay? Now that, in, in a state of crisis, in a state of necessity, right? Here, here's the, the adversities and here's the, just the raw necessity of having to do something different, having to come up with a creative thought, having to get off your ass and do something to keep the lights on, right? That's sort of a motivation. That's effective, but it's ephemeral, right? It comes and goes, and you know people tend to get comfortable. And most people don't originate a creative thought unless their back is right against the wall. Now, living in crisis management gets old, right? That stresses you out, and uh, it doesn't make for a very happy uh, lifestyle. But uh, but that's pretty much the extent of the motivation of moving away from something you don't want. Well, it's much more inspirational to move toward something that you do want, okay? So, so picture it like this. You, you can move away from the negative circumstances of, you know, having to come up with, you know, the money for the bills this month, and you'll have to move away from those circumstances again. And what's the number on those bills? Is the number, uh, let's say, $5,000? I've got to come up with $5,000. I've got to do it fast. 
Okay. Okay, you'll come up with five. You'll do it. You'll do it. You're an able person. You'll do it, right? You were thinking you need to get five to get away from those negative circumstances called bill collectors or whatever. And so you'll come up with the five. So that, that was your standard. That was your standard. Now, put a zero on the end. Now we're looking at $50,000 because it's something you really want. Okay. Now, not it's not just the stress, you know, I got to go make money. Not only have the standards increased by 10 times in this case, in my example, uh, but also we've added what? We've added game. Game. Now, games are fun. We like to play games, right? There's a, a catchphrase going around our, our industry right now, which is how can you gamify, you know, gamify the customer experience, right? And uh, we look at uh, the uh, applications that are sold for mobile devices, like uh, uh, mobile games, right? People love to play games. Some of those games are productive. There are even, uh, there's a biz op that launched that uh, where people get to play a game and somehow do like sports team gaming or something like this to win, you know, cash and fabulous prizes. I don't know, uh, sports hats or whatever. I'm not a, a, a sports team guy, but uh, apparently a lot of people are. And so they get to, uh, they get to, I guess, invest in this game and they get to play the games and they get a free hat or something if they want. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. The point is people like games. People play the games whether they're getting paid or not. That's the point. People enjoy games. People come over to your house. Hey, we're going to have dinner. Let's play a game, right? Here's a board game. Here's Monopoly. Here's uh, uh, Cards Against Humanity. I don't know if anybody's ever played that. That's a, that's a fun one. And, um, yeah, so you get to play games. Well, and you don't get paid for these games. Right? In fact, you pay to play the games. You go buy the game, then you play it. Right? So can we bring that into our business? Can we induce a higher standard of productivity and simultaneously turn the stress into a fun game? We can. We can, my friends. And, you know, the, with, the, with the, the fun and the, the flippancy that comes with games, guess what happens? We, um, we start to uh, become more attractive to people because now we're not just stressed out we got to come up with 5,000 because that's the standard we set for ourselves because we didn't set high enough standards yesterday and now we need to get out of limiting circumstances no now it's hey we're we're moving on up <laughs> we're moving on up to the east side right in fact you know that this house in question was actually up on a hill on the east side so that's kind of interesting was it in New York City there are no hills there it was in uh, Tucson, Arizona. But the, uh, the point is, there's some hills, you see, on the east side. We were moving on up. And uh, so we can sing the Jefferson's theme song. For our younger people on the line, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. It was a classic uh, TV show from the 70s. Um, but, yeah, we're moving on up to the east side, and we're having fun doing it. Now, how attractive is that? Not just for yourself. Not just, you know, hey, I'm in the game now. I'm in the game. And we're playing. And we're going to play to win. Right? We're going to make it happen. We're going to hustle. We're going to get things done, man. We're going to reduce the amount of time it takes to get things done because we want to win the game. Why do we want to get win the game? Because we're moving toward that increase in our life, which we all strive for if we've got enough attention to put on the future, right? And rather than just, than just dwelling in the past and the circumstances, which are what? The creation of the, the decisions we made in the past. You see, some people live chronically in the past, and they're constantly on the treadmill of the present, hoping to create a better future, but their, their mind is in the past. That's, that's like a psychotic way to live, neurotic at best, neurotic at best, okay? So constantly reliving the past and trying to just make ends meet, living hand to mouth, and getting out of negative circumstances is neurotic at best. But when we can consider the future, when we have considerations that are based on possibilities which have not yet manifested, but like I said before, are palpable. Like, man, I could see that. I could see myself experiencing that. What is this whole car program all about? For our new people, you'll see this when you go through the higher steps. We've got this car allowance program. Yet another way for you to make money here inside Digital Altitude. Michael Force is not satisfied that you get 60% payout across the product line. In addition to that, here's a car allowance. Right? Oh, you want a BMW? You want, like, uh, my buddy Alfredo, a Ferrari? Hey, go get your Ferrari! Right? So there's some more game. Games! We like games! And the standards go up, and we're having fun doing it, 
and we're motivated not because of stress, but because we're contemplating a future which very well could be ours. And you know what? I've heard it many times, and I believe it, that if you've got a desire for something in your life, for some experience, for some, in this case, a house, and in the case of this story, if you've got a desire for that, well, you've also got the aptitude for its fulfillment. And we could take this to, to spiritual levels, right? And I've, I've done a lot of, you know, reading and, uh, you know, philosophy and uh, spirituality and different things over the years. And, and uh, you know, it can be said that uh, this is actually your, your drive towards this, this greatness, this higher standard, this uh, providing of this lifestyle for your family. And, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're after, the thing that keeps you up at night, the thing that you're really inspired about, that that's actually what people can say is God's will for you. Right? People sometimes uh, they, they say, well, you know, if, uh, if it's God's will, then I'll, then I'll succeed, right? or I'll, then I'll get the money, or uh, whatever. Right? And so that right there is, I believe, a statement of uh, ignorance. It's also a statement of irresponsibility. Because if we look at it like this, and, and uh, you know, whether you're spiritual or not, this is the philosophy that I live by, uh, if we look at it like this, that uh, my innermost desires are, in fact, God's will for me, and the reason that they've been planted there is because I also have the means for their fulfillment, right? That that uh, you know, I don't, I'm not given something that uh, like a carrot that's dangling in front of me that I can never attain, right? That's not how it works. There's not like some capricious God who just you know, uh, would like to see me squirm and, you know, not get what I want, <laughs> you know. So, so that's my interpretation of it, right? So the reason you've got that desire is because that's what's meant for you to have. Should you be willing to take the responsibility, and like we talked about last week, accept the responsibility for its fulfillment, right? God's always been willing. How about you willing, you'll succeed. You willing, you'll get the money, right? So, Again, it's a much more responsible position to take, and it's a much more causative position to take. So that's why it's so that's why it's so elevating. And here we are in digital altitude, right? We're gaining altitude in our lives financially, and in our and in our psyche, and in our, our life happiness and our fulfillment. We're gaining altitude because we're doing something more resourceful than just trying to get out of the negative circumstances of yesterday. And yes. This requires that we leave our comfort zone. This requires that we, we take on risk. If we look at the, um, uh, the dictionary, which is my favorite self-help book ever written, because it's got definitions of all the words that I hear people using all the time. So I like to help myself and, and know what people are talking about, including myself, right, because I use words too. And so I, I get the dictionary out, and I look up things like entrepreneur, which says uh, a person who takes on greater than normal risk to grow a business or businesses uh, for the purpose of profit, right? So that's what an entrepreneur is. So that means who's responsible for that? Oh, well, me. Me. I'm the one taking on risk. I'm the one leaving my comfort zone. I'm the one who is going to endeavor into, as we were talking about last week, who's going to endeavor into a higher level of knowingness, right? I'm going to learn some stuff. I'm going to study marketing. I'm going to learn how the mind works. I'm going to learn why do people make the decisions that they make, right? How can I induce decisions in others to participate in my offer, whether we're talking about digital altitude or whatever is in the marketplace, right? Somebody has to get it sold. Otherwise, nothing happens, right? You can have a great idea, <clears throat> you can have a great product, and nobody's buying, and uh, no, no business, right? No business. So we're we're engaged in business. So we've got to we've got to gain ability in these areas, these profitable areas of marketing and causation. And it's more fun to do that with higher standards that will get us that, that will give us a reason to get out of our, out of our comfort zone. I didn't know where the fifty thousand was coming from for the house. All I knew was I had a great opportunity in front of me. I had already demonstrated the ability to get out of the job, and I, I suppose you know prove to myself that uh, you know that that uh, initial goal of twenty thousand per month was. Uh, something attainable by, by not only these other people who I saw doing it, but by myself as well. Now, if you're brand new and you haven't demonstrated that to yourself yet, well, you know, stick around, right? Stick around. It's, it's, you know, it's very doable. Um, the evidence that you see of other people is, is a beautiful springboard, okay? Now you've got to assimilate that and you've got to accept it as your own. You've got to claim, claim ownership of that. 
So, uh, so if you're in the process of doing that now, I would say stick close with your sponsor, your coach, you know, with the, the, these calls like you're on right now. And you'll, just through osmosis, you'll get more and more uh, evidence and, uh, and self-belief, right? That's what this all comes down to, self-belief. And you can have that house on the hill if that's what you really want. In fact, it's easier, check this out, it was easier to make the 50000 that month because we knew why and the money was basically already spent in our, in our minds. Okay, it was easier to do that than it is to make the 5000 to pay the bills because you got the stress and because you're dealing with crisis. Okay, it's actually easier to get what you want than what you're obligated to do because you've not been playing big enough up to this point. Does that make sense? So this is a big step for a lot of people. And I think last week I told the story about the bum on the street corner that, uh, you know, was leaving the corner and was concerned, you know, if they go and they get a job, well, who's going to get my street corner? They're leaving their comfort zone. I think I told that story. But uh, even if I didn't, the point is that uh, leaving the, the comfort zone, uh, hi, Wendy, we see you typing. Uh, if we leave the comfort zone of the known, and venture off into the realm of the unknown. It's not, you know, it's not designed to be, to be just, uh, you know, business as usual. It's designed to cause yourself to grow. And we'll face adversity. Look, I've faced plenty of adversity. I'll tell you what, though, I, I get, uh, I get to have different problems now than I had before. Like the problems I had before, uh, while working a job. Were, were plentiful, and they were the problems that come with having a job. And now, I've got different problems. And you know what? I'll take these problems. These are better problems to have, okay? Because I know now that I, I've got a choice, right? I know that now that I can, ah, that I can actually create. I can be more causative in my life, and I can get what I really want. But you know what, my friends? It all starts with a decision, and that may sound cliche, but I'm going to tell you right now, that so few people are willing to make the big decisions that everyone here has an opportunity to make to move you rapidly towards what you really want in your life. You see, most people, they, they live in a state of chronic indecision, indecision, also known as procrastination. Now, this is right out of the classic book, Think and Grow Rich, where Napoleon Hill talks about the six ghosts of fear and how uh, procrastination is an enemy that virtually every person must face, you see. It is this procrastination, which is the opposite of decision. It is this procrastination which causes people to doubt themselves, and that doubt crystallizes into fear, right? And fear is crippling. No intelligent action comes from a fearful mind. <clears throat> that's not game. That's not game. That's struggle, right? Now, both endeavors, right, whether we're talking about having a game or we're struggling, both endeavors are to the, to the uh, significant end of profitability and making money, paying the bills, and whatever, okay? But one is fun, and the other is not so fun. So when we think about that, now I'm thinking about what decisions can I make, even though I have faced adversity, okay, and may continue to face adversities, right? What decisions that I can make that I'll not turn back from that other people just aren't willing to make? They'll procrastinate. They'll think about it. They'll continue to base their decisions on yesterday's results, yesterday's uh, circumstances, expectations based on their level of production from days gone by, right? Understand, my friends, yesterday does not set a precedent on what you should expect tomorrow. Imagine you had a blank piece of paper that you can write anything you want on it. The problem with most people is they keep writing the same thing. They keep drawing the same picture every day. That's not terribly causative, right? So if we're going to be more effective, we're going to have to originate some new thoughts, and those thoughts can be very beautiful. And so you see, we're going to face some adversity as we make the decision and then plow through. We plow through whatever barriers are in the way of that because, yes, uh, causing a new, a new standard of living, a new, a new uh, you know, level of, of self-expression and, and accomplishment, is going to, uh, you know, it's going to rattle the cages of the universe, so to speak. And the proving ground is you getting through these adversities. The proving ground is you learning and figuring stuff out. The proving ground is you solving the problems and overcoming the barriers. You know, one of the highest functions that a human is capable of is, is solving a problem. 
right? I mean, this, this is way above the intellect of an instinctive animal, right? So uh, you can train uh, uh, an animal to jump over a hurdle and to do tricks, you know, at the circus or whatever. And that's, you know, that's a training pattern that goes in. And they've got to have repetition over and over and over again. So there's no problems with that act. No problems. We know exactly how high the hurdle is. And you jump through the hoop of fire, and it's exactly this height every single time. There's no problems. Okay? Humans get to solve the problems. They even get to create the problems. <laughs> so think about this. Think about a, a higher level of expression. Now we're getting into you proving your own worthiness of your goals. You proving that to let's say the universe. <laughs> you proving your worthiness in the face of adversity because you've decided, you've really decided, you've not just said on a whim, maybe I'll try. Like our good friend Yoda said, there is no try, there is you do or you do not, right? We, we don't try, okay, so we've made a decision. And what is a decision? A decision is a cutting off point. A decision comes from the, the Latin root word, decidere, which means to cut off from, decidere, to cut off from. That's the Latin root of the word decision. So it's a cutting off point. There are many possibilities for you and, and for your life. Many, many possibilities, infinite possibilities. But you are saying, I am cutting off this one possibility. And this is the one that I shall experience and no others. This is the one. It is buy the house, get the 50 grand, do the thing. That's what I have decided to do. And the methods that I will use to do that, which have been revealed to me up to this point, include uh, well, marketing this, this business right here that I've got, that I signed up to do this, this marketing deal. Okay, well, great. Since I signed up for it, I might as well do it. That's called having integrity. And this is a path that I can walk to the accomplishment of what I've decided to accomplish. And there are some known factors and there are some unknown factors. Those unknown factors are the problems you get to solve, right? The unknown factors are where's the next sale coming from? Where are the leads coming from? Well, you get to solve those problems. That's really cool. Right? You get to create something. That's nice. Right? You're human. You're able to solve these problems. That's great. Go learn some stuff. And now the, uh, you know, the reward, of course, the reward is that you never again have to submit to failure. Once you've proven to yourself that you can solve problems and reach goals, you can go on an upward spiral with, with this. Okay? Now, there's also you know, the, the responsibility of having to continue to come up with uh, new experiences that you're going to assign as goals to yourself that you're going to make decisions on and keep that upward spiral going. Okay, so uh, there's there's more work. You know, now that you got the million dollars or whatever, well, well now what? Well, you've got to have an answer to now what? Otherwise, you're in trouble again. So, uh, but that's, again, that's more game. Now you get to have more games, bigger games, you know, different games. Uh, the, the issue, once again, with, with so many people and I see, Rosie, where you're saying uh, you've allowed procrastination to hold me back. Yes, that's, that's the majority of society, is they've allowed procrastination, which is the same exact thing as indecision. They've allowed them to hold, to hold themselves back. Identification of it, Rosie, is the, is the first step to, to a solution, of course, right? We can't solve a problem that we're in denial about. And yes, we're all subject to procrastination. We're all subject to indecision. Uh, let's face it, the comfort zone is comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called the comfort zone. But I would offer you that if you can uh, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, well then, now you've got something. Now you've got something, right? If you can cause yourself to reach higher uh, each day as if it was the last, you know, the last quarter of the Super Bowl, the last, you know, five seconds on the clock at the basketball game or something, if you can operate at that level more consistently, more often, well, then you're naturally you're going to be going at a much faster pace. So the, the problem with so many people is that they, they live in a state of chronic indecision. In fact, Napoleon Hill, who I quoted earlier out of his book, Think and Grow Rich, he wrote a subsequent book which was considered very uh, controversial at the time. In fact, uh, his wife objected to him publishing it, and, uh, and so everybody agreed it would not be published until not only Napoleon Hill was, was uh, dead, but uh, when she was dead, then the Napoleon Hill uh, Foundation could publish this highly controversial book. And uh, so she passed some years ago, and the book finally was published. And the book was called Outwitting the Devil. Very controversial at the time. Keep in mind, They Could Grow Rich was published in 1936, right? So we're talking about uh, some time ago, society was 
a little bit uh, different back then, <laughs> a lot different. Uh, nowadays, this would be considered, you know, mild, you know, whatever. I mean, just look at some of the stuff people do uh, on stage, you know, at uh, pop music events and such, but, uh, and what goes on on social media. But anyway, this book was called Outwitting the Devil. You can get a copy, I'm sure, on Amazon or wherever you get your books. And, um, and in this book, Napoleon Hill mocked up a conversation, you see, uh, with him and the devil. Kind of like the opposite of, if anybody's ever read Neil Donald Walsh's books, uh, Conversations with God, which were also controversial. Oh, here's this guy, you know, saying that he's talking to God. Okay, well, here's this guy, Napoleon Hill, who wrote arguably the most influential uh, personal growth and wealth creation book of all time, known as Think and Grow Rich, writing this book about having a conversation uh, with the devil. Okay, and so he's having this conversation, and uh, he's... He's got the uh, he's got the devil revealing the secrets of how he, he destroys men and destroys their dreams, right? And uh, so in this uh, this conversation, the the devil reveals the uh, the biggest weapon he has against man, and that is to cause man to constantly drift, to be a drifter, to be in a state of chronic indecision, chronic indecision. Procrastination, drifting from thing to thing, never accomplishing anything, never sometimes getting started, but certainly not completing what they start. Okay, so that's not that's not a decision, is it? Right? The decision we already recognized is a cutting off point. Well, if you cut yourself off from any other outcome, well then you've already decided there is no turning back. There is no turning back. It's this is what we do. We're we're going to achieve uh, accomplishment here. We're going to finish what we start. That's what we do. That is the anatomy of success itself, is completing what you start. You decided to do the thing. You started to do the thing. You finished the thing. That is called success. That is accomplishment. That is excellence. Commitment to completion. So now, when we think about this, uh, what can we do that we haven't done in terms of at least making the decision that we will accomplish something greater? And look, we can do this on a gradient if we're, you know, if we're new, if we're, if we're a little bit nervous, and uh, hey, we haven't accomplished anything that big before, well, how about each day we accomplish one thing, you know, greater than we've never accomplished before? Now, one thing we can do as sort of an on-ramp to all this, one thing we can do is we can learn something new each day. That's an accomplishment. So let's make a decision that uh, tomorrow you're going to read, uh, I don't know, let's say 10 pages. Of a, of a personal development book. And if that's too much, three pages. We're going to open the cover of the book and we will not stop until three pages have been read or 10 or 50 or a chapter or whatever, right? A chapter, there you go. Read one chapter. And if you don't know what book to read, go download a free copy of Thinking Grow Rich off the internet right now. Great, start with that. Fine. First chapter, thoughts are things. Very good. So you do that and you've decided to do it and then once you've completed it, you see, you can check off that you've done, that's check off as in checking off on your checklist, not Mr. Checkoff from Star Trek, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which I've enjoyed the Star Trek movies uh, of late. But um, anyway, you can check off that, uh, that you did in fact complete what you decided to do. Now that is a statement of integrity. You're actually, at that point, you're making sort of an integrity list. You've heard about a gratitude list? Right, like things you're grateful for, that's cool. Right? How about an integrity list? How about things that you said you would do that you did? Now you're proving to yourself, in fact, you're actually putting down in writing, you know, uh, here's what I said I would do and here's what I did, check. Right? I am a person of integrity. Right? So you are actually selling to yourself your own ability to follow through on what you've decided. So something as small as, you know, go read 10 pages, go learn something. Right, do something resourceful. That's that's a good start. That's a good start. Now, uh, it's going to uh, th that will indirectly move you towards your goals. But then, when it comes to the income-producing activities, what can you do? Let's take it a step further. What can you do that you haven't done before? That if you really had to come up with that money, not not out of necessity because you need to pay your bills, but because you really want something, right? You've assigned some some benefit, some tangible. Uh, even if it's a, a token, like some tangible thing that you can reward yourself with. You've assigned yourself a prize, you see, when you reach this goal. And it can be a small prize for a small goal, 
right? So let's say, for example, I am going to take this action. I'm going to accomplish, um, you know, the placement of an advertisement. I'm going to accomplish, um, uh, if you're into phone work, uh, I'm going to make five phone calls. I'm going to accomplish something that is, that is an income-producing activity. I'm going to write uh, three emails, right, for my email follow-up sequence. And then uh, upon accomplishment of that, again, we're not even into the making of the money yet, but upon accomplishment of that, you're going to reward yourself with some, uh, some thing, that you're going to deny yourself that thing until you've accomplished what you said you would accomplish. And again, we're talking about a, a token. Maybe you need a new uh, a pen or something. You wanted a nice uh, ink pen, right? I'm not saying you've got to go spend you know, $500 on a gilded pen with diamond-crusted whatever, but some people take it to extremes, okay? But... Uh, you, you'd like a better pen. So uh, when you write, you know, the, the, the five emails, then you will have proven to yourself that you're a writer and you deserve a better pen, and you go to the store, you spend $10. You get where I'm going with this? And then we keep raising the bar, right? And now we've made, when we've made, you know, five sales at this uh, specific product level, then we're going to reward ourselves with, I don't know, uh, a trip to your favorite restaurant or something. So again, we're gamifying the whole thing. That's what we're talking about, gamification. Self-induced. You don't need Michael Forrest to say, here's a car program. That's nice. That's a nice game. What other games can we play? Right now, what games can we play? Right? Here's a game. Go make 50 grand this month so you can pick out the tile on that house that you decided you wanted to buy. That's a fun game. If you're day one, you're probably not in that game yet, but you can be in that game, and it doesn't have to take a long time. It'll take longer if you don't get on the, uh, you know, on the on-ramp, right? So that's why I'm introducing these smaller games to, to give you a taste, to give you a, you know, a, a template, okay? But the, uh, the games get bigger and bigger, right? And then you've got, uh, you got games like, uh, you know, multi-billionaires that go and they, you know, have skyscraper games. Who can have the tallest building in the city, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not there yet on, on the gradient, okay? But most people give themselves too much time. Here's, here's the point that I'm hoping to make, is that uh, most people uh, somehow don't believe they're worthy of the game or that they can win it or go fast, right? The, um, the interesting thing that I've been reminded of uh, very recently is that when people go slow, when they build their business slow, when they, when they create slowly whatever they're looking to create, uh, it's because they've got the idea that uh, they need to preserve uh, what I called earlier the comfort zone, that they need to preserve the status quo or things as they are, that they can somehow uh, maintain stability on this plateau and at the same time reach the higher plateau. Well, that is how to go slow. You will actually destroy the plateau that you're on, you will see, again, we're talking about going through the adversity, right? You will see stuff come apart. Just like when I was getting into this industry, I, I saw my life coming apart. My job was cutting my pay three times a year, getting a pay cut, and I had a stress-induced condition from the job, and oh my goodness, things aren't working out. Here I am studying, you know, personal development and trying to live to the best of my ability, resourceful, sober, the whole thing, and, uh, you know, stuff's not working. Stuff's not working. Well, well, we could say that's the universe saying, John, you're getting close to your goal. Everything's coming apart. You're about to reach that higher level. You can't stay comfy and do that. So when people go slow, it's because they're afraid of destroying. You, I mean, think about it like this. If you wanted to build this whole dichotomy of create and destroy, if you wanted to build a, um, let's say, a forest, right, you'd have to, to plant trees. Now, if there's anything in the, in the way, of those trees, like maybe some old, you know, dying trees, right? You'd have to destroy that forest, rip out the old stuff, or like crops, like farmers know about this. I'm not a farmer, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But, uh, you know, you got to tear up those plants from last year, uh, you know, and then you can go ahead and put the new seeds. So you've got to destroy to create a clearing for that which you're going to grow and create. Does this make sense? So when people avoid destruction, they're, they're clutching on to the known. They're clutching on to the outworn methods of yesterday, clutching on to comfort. But all of our goals lie in the realm of the unknown. So you've got to be able to venture beyond the known. And yes, yeah, so the stuff is going to come apart. 
and 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 bravo you don't want those problems anymore anyway <laughs> so so my point in all this is that if we can keep our eye on the game if we can induce a game for ourselves and then we can and we have a reason for it you see there's a prize there's a reason for playing the game otherwise there's no game okay but we've got a reason for playing the game and it's a reason big enough to get uncomfortable and to allow some destruction to take take place in the realm of the known right because the desire for what's out there uh, in this in this higher plateau, the desire for that is worthy of our getting uncomfortable. Well, then we've got something, and it's actually easier to go fast and to do that than it is to just you know make sure we come up with the bills money you know because of last month or something like that. It's a big departure. It's a big departure, and it's one of the things that causes the leap from employee thinking to entrepreneur thinking. It's one of the reasons that causes that to be you know, so uh, unnerving for some people, even more so than the bum leaving the corner to go get a job instead of just begging, right? So this is the leap. You can make this leap. You can do it with the guidance and support, which I was so blessed to have when I was getting started. Yes, with the guidance and support of the people in your community, the community that you've chosen to immerse yourself in and which to a degree you're doing right now as you listen to these words. You could be watching Lady Gaga videos on YouTube right now, but no, but no, you're here on the Black Diamond call. Bravo, hats off to you. Hats off to you. You're doing something resourceful. And if no one's told you today, I believe in you. Just by virtue of the fact that you're here less than a week before Christmas, right, when attention spans are low and activity is high in things other than business building, right? So if you're, you're here, especially if you're brand new, I know you want it. You're on this call. I know you want it. And if you're not new and you're here, you've already made millions and you're here listening to this right now, bravo to you, right? That's vigilance. That's vigilance right there. Always watching at the door. Always, you know, getting a little bit better. You know, keeping the saw sharp, right? Doing something resourceful. Not, not resting on, you know, the random thoughts of whatever society thinks you should be thinking about or the news or whatever. Uh, Ash Ali talked about this earlier today on our on our wake-up call. If you guys didn't catch it, definitely catch it. He dropped a few gold nuggets on that call. Ash, if you're listening, and I suspect you are, bravo, man. Hats off to you. Great wake-up call this morning. Um, so let's have a game. Let's have fun with this. right? What's the alternative? Drag your ass through life, being miserable, just getting by. Oh, my goodness. Rats in the gutter can do that. Right? You're, are you a rat? <laughs> you're looking for a piece of rotten cheese or something <laughs> you're a powerful being you're a powerful being so let me acknowledge that let me validate that right now and let me validate it even more by looking at this chat roll because I I, um, I was looking at the chat roll earlier and I saw a couple of people commenting and so I wanted to acknowledge everybody but I have a hard time talking and looking at the chat roll at the same time as you guys know so uh, Rosie Sharon thank you everybody uh, Helene thank you I'm going to go ahead and open it up for some Q and A, and uh, or comments, right? It doesn't have to be a direct question, but if you like to to uh, add to the topic, and um, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. A couple questions here. Let's see before I open it up. Uh, Rosie, this helps me set some daily attainable goals. Yes, Rosie, very good. Somebody was asking here. Uh, was it Naveen? Which personal development book would you recommend? Well, I just did. Think and Grow Rich. If you had one book starting out, uh, let it be that. That's that's a fine one. You know, other people uh, have big libraries of books. Uh, like me, and so you, I mean, I, I can tell you all kinds of stuff, right? From Eastern and Western spiritual texts to psychology books and like heavy-duty philosophy stuff. Um, I've been reading for a long time. So, uh, and sometimes people ask, you know, John, how do you come up with all this stuff? Well, I've been reading for a long time, right? I didn't originate these words, you know. I, uh, you know, I've got my my guns are loaded, you know, very very loaded. I got lots of ammo. Uh, so start reading. It's uh, definitely, definitely worth it. So we're going to go into uh, Q&A mode here. Here we go. Okay, so Q&A session has started. So if you'd like to share uh, or, or ask a question, please keep it on the topic. I, I can't help. Like if you're new and you're trying to, you know, you got a support issue or something, hit the help button in your Digital Altitude uh, members site. Okay, so that's how you get support. I, I can't solve your problem when it comes to like a support issue or you need to talk to your coach or something. But if it's on the topic, of uh, creating some game and reaching higher and raising your standards and knowing that you're worthy of that and having some integrity. 
well then, let's have a conversation. So if you'd like to raise your hand, you can hit star six or the mute button if you're on the app, and that will raise your hand. And then I think you've got to press, uh, if you're on a phone, I think you've got to press the number one to confirm that you actually want to talk or two to cancel. Uh, again, I'm not, uh, I'm on the host line, so I don't know exactly what the commands are, but you should see them there uh, in front of you. So again, star six to raise your hand, and no hands are raised. So I'm going to ask one more time if you want to raise your hand. Oh, here comes Naveen. Here comes Naveen. Hello, Naveen. You're live on the air. How are you? I'm Hello, good, Naveen. Uh, you're live. John. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm good, John. Good. You're live. I'm just, going, just going back to the uh, point where you said uh, get a hold of a, a new self-development book. So which one would you recommend? Oh, they can grow rich. Uh, that would be where I would start. Then you grow rich. That should be required reading for every entrepreneur. My goodness, for every human. I, it's just, it's awesome. Uh, it's, uh, you can get it for free because it's way out of copyright. Uh, anything over 70 years old is out of copyright. Uh, I personally enjoy reading the, um, the official uh, original version uh, exactly the way the author wrote it. So you can find the original text on Amazon uh, or wherever you get your books. But uh, but yeah, if nothing else, get the you know get the download the PDF, uh, which is the mass market version. It's you know slightly abridged, but the uh, still the points are are well made in there. So that's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. <coughs> so uh, thank you, you so go. much. Thanks. So oh, much. my pleasure. Great, great conversation. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, and uh, anybody else? You can raise your hand now. Speak now, or forever hold your peace. And we've got Ricky. Here comes Ricky. Hey, Ricky, you're live on the air. How are you? Hey, John, how are you doing? This is Ricky. Yeah, uh, so I, I've i been trying to tackle some pretty heavy days, I guess. Um, sometimes it's eight hours just because I have the opportunity to live with my parents right now. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes it goes up to 12. Um, and I'm just like in the laptop the whole time. Um, but then I notice that my sleep isn't as I want it to be. And um, it kind of takes away from my next day. And I'm starting to realize, you know, proper rest is important. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go as fast as I can, but, like, what would you recommend, like, two two hours of rest time or, like, I don't know, like, I want to work all day, but it's also challenging at times. Yeah, I understand. So are you asking me if, if you should run on two hours of sleep? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> um, like uh, two hours of, I guess, just like unwinding time or... Unwinding time. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, I would say I would say if you need unwinding time, then go to YouTube and uh, watch the audio uh, recital of Think and Grow Rich or some resourceful thing. So you can sit there and unwind. You don't have to actually read. But the, the good ideas are going in. You know, audio books also work, right? I was just mentioning YouTube because uh, I know that uh, we were just talking about Think and Grow Rich. And I think there are 600 people or so who have recited that book into a microphone to create a YouTube video in, like, every different language. So that's a good place to start. And it's free. But the, um, the, the point is that if you need to unwind, uh, if you could still be in the conversation of success, that would be good. Here's the thing, Ricky. You've got to want it more than anything, right? Diversions are expensive. I say that from experience. Diversions are expensive. Uh, can you afford a hobby right now? Uh, well, you tell me. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you got to do some other fun stuff. And that's why I say if you can gamify your business, well, now the business is fun. I remember when I became the top earner in my chosen company all those years ago, the, uh, the guy whose record I broke, who was also a top earner, but who I just exceeded his best month ever, uh, it was my first uh, six-figure month, in fact. And he, um, he said, John, what do you do for fun? And I said, well, I, I sell our product. Because really, I was that into it. It was fun. It was a game. And uh, so, yeah, balance in life. You know, I've heard about that. That's a, it's an interesting theory, Ricky, balance in life. Uh, as soon as I know more about it, I'll, I, I guess I'll write another okay. book or something. But I don't know too much about balance <laughs> right now. But I can tell you that, that if you want your goals, like you want air to breathe, you're going you're gonna to be a little bit out of balance, and that's fine. I know there are a lot of personal development people who will tell you, hey, you need to, okay. to you know, go after the balance. Uh, that's uh, that's ne never been my way. So that's, that's my truth, Ricky. I don't know if that rings true for you, 
but I'd rather be having a blast, making a pile of money, and uh, a little bit out of balance in my life, you know, than uh, you know being uh, you know tiptoeing through the tulips of mediocrity. You know, screw okay. that. Okay. And by the way, one of the things that affords me balance is, or, or affords me you know sanity and the ability to keep up a fast pace, uh, despite a bit of imbalance, is uh, eat right exercise and yes get proper rest which doesn't mean sleep eight hours a day you know maybe you sleep six uh, and I don't know different bodies are different but my goodness put it put in some good you know vegetables lean proteins and hit the gym or something because that changes everything I I can't stress that enough again this is my truth I don't know if that works for you but I can tell you it's okay. working a lot of people's lives your thoughts um yeah no I I am really health conscious so I do try to take care of my body, kind of treat it like an automobile, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And I don't really stress out too much when I'm typing emails because I'm working on my follow-up series. It kind of feels very, I guess, in the flow. Um, so yeah, I guess the gamify is something that I'm going to start adding to it, just kind of mm -hmm. make it a little fun. Yeah. Have fun, man. Who who said that? Oh, you know, making millions of dollars was like arduous, miserable work. You know, um, diligence, right? Diligence in, in your work. Uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm into words, right? I'm into the dictionary. So if you look up diligence, uh, you'll notice that the uh, that is a, uh, from the Latin diligere, diligere. So like before, we were talking about uh, uh, decision it was from decidere, uh, also Latin. So diligence is from uh, diligere which means to take delight in. Okay, so when we think about being industrious, being diligent, right, like working our asses off, like that means we take delight in it. That's okay. the root of that word. Okay, and I, unfortunately, the, the whole idea of work has been a, a bit invalidated, especially in industries like ours, you know, push-button riches, instant magical systems that do everything and you sit your ass on the couch and eat carbohydrates and you magically make millions because our system is special or something. Oh, please, right? No, you're going to work, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Henry Ford said, there is joy in work. There is no happiness in life unless someone realizes they have accomplished something. That's Henry Ford, right? So I'm, I'm with that idea, man. Like, love your work. Be diligent. Take delight in it. So, uh, so yeah, that. you may not have a whole lot of time to to go uh, balance the scales with you know mindless uh, diversions, you might miss the new Star Wars, whatever the hell that thing is. Um, <laughs> so guess what? You'll see it on on uh, you know Netflix or whatever when it comes out. Make your own popcorn. You'll even save money. That's great. So, uh, <laughs> Ricky, I hope that helps, man. But thank you for jumping out. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah. All right, very good, very good. Let's go on. We got one more. Our next contestant on the Black Diamond Show is Christopher. How are you, Christopher? Christopher, you're live on the air. Hello, Christopher. I hear you breathing, Christopher. Please say something. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, good, good. <laughs> I have a, well, I'm, I'm new uh, to DA. I just uh, recently got to the rise level. And Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, Ty is my coach. He's Ty? Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ty Coughlin. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. Um, oh actually. man, yeah, yeah. Well, tell him uh, his old brother John says hi. Ty Ty yeah, actually he, uh, was on this call when we first started this call for here inside the Digital Altitude community, and uh, Ty uh, credits me with being his first coach. So, yeah, we spoke about that today, believe it or not. Yeah, it's I a fun, him all fun time. guy. And a um, mountain man up there in uh, yeah, yeah, he's a mountain guy. I'm yeah. <laughs> a little far from me. I'm in Miami, so. <laughs> oh, well, good for you. Right now it's, like, uh, really, really cold up here, so. I have, um, I guess, just maybe, like, two questions. Um, believe it or not, I listened to an old Black Diamond call with you and Ty, and one of the things that I like that Ty uh, spoke about for a newbie, what's, I guess, one of the best things to get started, and... The advice you gave him was, uh, I guess, kind of three bullet points that I really took note of and spoke to Ty about this morning. You were telling me uh, in, in the Black Diamond call was, you know, find out who the top three people are, how they position themselves in the business, and, you know, what are they doing uh, with their marketing. Right. One thing I really liked, um, my question is, one of the things I want you to, if you could, kind of elaborate on is an old YouTube uh video chat you had, I think back in 2013, you spoke about your, your be, do, and have principle, if you can elaborate on that. 
And then mm. last question is something I want to ask you about fitness because I'm, I'm a fitness buff too, about 20 years like you. Okay. Well, uh, be, do, and have is the natural order of, of life, really. I mean, uh, Johann Goethe said, one must be something in order to do something. And so a lot of times people approach, and, and I could elaborate. In fact, I did in my first book, Integrity is Everything, uh, Chapter 4. Uh, it's called Three Magic Words, and it goes through that whole principle. Um, and you can get into some, like, heavy-duty philosophy, too, not just, you know, you talking with some guy, John Lavinia, but, like, you can read whole, you know, books and, and tomes on this philosophy of life. But what a lot of people do, Christopher, is they, they, uh, they look at, at their life and what they have or don't have, and they base their decisions about what they're going to do or not do on those circumstances. But like we said before, circumstances are... Uh, the result of the past. Circumstances are the effect, not the cause. But when people assign cause to their circumstances, they're actually attempting to, well, well, they are now the effect. If the circumstances are cause, well, that's what determines what they do, right, based on what they have or don't have. Right. Well, they can never really be something greater than they are now because they are the effect of their circumstances. So the opposite of that is how life actually works. It's, it's be, do, and have in that order. So who are you being? Well, great question. Uh, how do we answer that question? Well, uh, how do I feel? How do I feel? So this comes down to emotion. Okay. Right? There's, there's a saying in the, in the Bible, right? Ask and it shall be given you. Well, how do you ask? Well, you put yourself in an emotional state. You get on a vibration, a harmonious vibration with that which you seek. That's how you ask. And you've got to hold the thought and hold the emotional state to the point where you become the person who would experience such uh, an event, such a havingness, right? And you, the bridge between the being and the having, of course, is the doing. So now that you are, Christopher, the guy who makes 50000 a month or whatever your goal is and drives the, the Mercedes, BMW, Lamborghini, Ferrari, and you've got the house on the hill and blah, blah, blah. Oh, great. Now that you're that guy, you've, you've assigned that cause to yourself. That's who you're being. Great. Well, now what does that guy do? What decisions does he make? Not based on circumstances. That's, that's have or not have. We're not concerned with that right now. We're talking about who you're being, right? Oh, so you're that confident guy. You're that, that person who's a top producer. Okay, great. So now you make the decisions as that guy, and then you'll have the Lamborghini. Then you'll have what that guy has with a, a pretty blatant disregard for the circumstances that existed uh, prior to the doing this. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. So that's be, do, and have in a nutshell, and we can go way, way deeper. In. I mean, I've host, hosted two-day workshops on that. So um, anyway, what's your fitness question? Uh, one of the things that I, I know you don't want to get off topic <laughs> um, with the discussion is, um, have you ever heard of FST7, stands for Fascia Stretch Training 7? Uh, no, I'm, I'm kind of old school, uh, pumping <laughs> iron, you know, eating vitamins, pounding protein. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. Definitely look, definitely look it up. It's called FST7. I think okay. you really like it. It's something, something new, different. It'll is that an body. MLM? Are, we, are you signing us all up in an MLM deal? No, 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 no. no. This, this, this is a training philosophy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know, man. It's Beachbody, uh, you know, uh, Tony Horton and all that stuff. I'll tell you, there's a company who has done some unbelievable marketing, you know, in terms of uh, oh, Beachbody yeah. programs. Yeah, insanity and size and all this I've, stuff. I've oh, done those. Yeah, insanity and it's it, it's great. Yeah, but check out yeah, check out FST seven. It's it's really good. It's cool. really good. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Christopher. Thanks no, thank for being you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. My thank pleasure. You. And we got one more, and we're going to wrap up. We got Marcus. So uh, here we go, Marcus. You're live on the air. Hey, John. How you doing? Man? Doing good. <laughs> uh, big fan. Uh, great, great topic today. Great talk. Uh, I'm brand new. Uh, I'm sorry, Marcus. Could you get closer to your microphone? You sound a bit distant. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Not, not really. It might just be a bad connection. So I heard that you're brand new. Okay. Yeah, I'm brand new. Uh, I work part time at Macy's for the holiday season. Uh, I'm sorry, Marcus. It sounds like I'm hearing more of the street than I'm hearing of you. It sounds like you're out in the wind or the street or something. Hello. How about now? Oh, night and day difference. Okay. Uh, Hi, Marcus. Hey. How you doing, John? You were saying. All right. So, yeah, I work part-time at Macy's. Uh, basically, my sole definite purpose is to save as much money as I can to get started in uh, MDA. But uh, I wanted to know, should I wait and try to save up 
to jump in at a more profitable position like Rise, or should I jump in as soon as I can at any level that I can afford and then upgrade later? That's almost the same question that uh, Christopher was asking about B doing half. So here's a demonstration of it right here. Here's something we can touch and we can say, ah, Marcus has circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, big announcement. Marcus has circumstances. Wow. Okay. So now that we know that we've got circumstances, we have a lack of money in this case. That's a circumstance that we can observe. And the more we observe it, the more we validate it, the more real it gets. But guess what, Marcus? I got great news for you. Great news. There are trillions of dollars on the planet. Trillions. Okay. Okay. So there's no lack of money. And so what we can do is we can go out of agreement with this whole lack thing, and we could say, ah, we've got an opportunity. We've got an opportunity. Who are we? We are the person who seizes opportunity. We carp the end, right? We seize the carp. And right. so now that you're the guy who seizes the carp, what doing this can we do to seize some carp over here? And we see that, uh, aha, we've got, uh, let's see, uh, something we can sell out of our garage. And it's, uh, you know, we can sell some old uh, things that we don't need anymore. There's this thing called eBay and Craigslist, right? We can uh, offload some Right, right. Mass that we don't need to carry around anymore. So that's nice. We can turn that into some money. And we, we can go, uh, well, let's see. You know, we're talking about Rise, right? So uh, we can go borrow, a, I don't know, $100 from how many people? Uh, 20 people. So go borrow $100 from 20 people. Go, go borrow $20 from 100 people, right? Right, You got 100 right. people that would lend you 20 bucks, right? Or we could, uh, let's see, what else we could do? We can get creative. And uh, I know people who... Um, you know, they, they drive Uber and Lyft and stuff like that. I was just in Los Angeles this weekend. I didn't rent a car. I don't feel like driving. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take Lyft. So those people mm. got to make money. And so I don't know if that exists where you live. but uh, It does. Okay, it does. great. And, uh, and so what other creative ideas? Now that we're thinking on solutions, because you see who we've become, Marcus, in this conversation, we've become the guys who come up with solutions, mm. not guys that sit around and bemoan our circumstances. Right. Okay. So now that we're thinking on solutions, let's keep that going, right? Get a list, right? Start writing this stuff out and come up with that, come up with that, come up with that. Before you know it, you came up with not only rise, you got to send, you're halfway to peak, right? And right. you got some marketing capital and you got out of your own way. Bravo, bravo. So who's in control, the story or the being? Hopefully the being, which is Marcus, right? Got it. So that's where I'm at with, with all this, man. It's like, you know what? Who was it that said... Um, I think it was William James that said, your circumstances may be uncongenial, but they will not long remain so if you but perceive a goal and are willing to, uh, to do whatever it takes to achieve it. I'm paraphrasing. So yeah, your circumstances are uncongenial, which means unfriendly, unfriendly towards your purposes. Right. Uh, okay, fine. You've got a story. Let's, let's keep writing that story. And think about this, Marcus. It's, it's six months. It's a year down the road. And you have a guest speaker on the Black Diamond Club. And you're telling all the newbies, man, you should have seen me. I was pathetic, man, and I couldn't come up with money. And, oh, you think you got a story. Let me tell you about my story. This is all part of the story, right? Beautiful. How fun of a story would it be if it was like, yeah, I just moseyed in here because I was bored. I had nothing else to do but, you know, throw tens of thousands of dollars at a business that I was kind of interested in. And, you know, it kind of worked. It was kind of effortless for me. I didn't have to do a damn thing. That would be a boring story. Yeah, it's not a good story at all. <laughs> so savor the moment, my friend. Savor the moment. Yes, it's fleeting. Yes, sir. All okay. Right, all right. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate it. No my, problem. My pleasure, man. Thank you. And with that, we're going to go ahead and cue it. Thank you, everybody who participated. And uh, it's always fun to be here with everybody. Look, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating this coming week. And I suspect that we're all celebrating a new year. All right? So it's getting real, my friends. It's getting real. 2017 is going to be your best year yet when you decide that it's going to be your best year yet. We still got time in 2016. That doesn't mean we're all on vacation. That doesn't mean turn off your brain because the calendar didn't tell you it's 2017 yet. I'm telling you to get a head start. I'm telling you to get ready for the best year you've ever had. Okay, you've got a vehicle that you can do it with right here. Just in terms of money, you've got a vehicle you can do it with. In terms of your friends, my goodness, we're all getting together in just a couple months in Maui. You've got some cool friends. You've got a great community of people. 
right? You're in that community. You're an asset to that community. So just know that. Know that you are right at the pre precipice of something spectacular and that's taking shape right before your eyes. Enjoy the game, my friends. Enjoy the game. This is life. It's happening now. I don't mean to get too lofty, <laughs> too you know, esoteric on anybody here, but I'm just really, I'm really feeling good about where we're going. Feeling good about where I'm going. And I hope that you can claim that for yourself as well, because you deserve it. You're here right now listening to this, and not <coughs> Lady Gaga videos. <laughs> I'll see everybody next time, and I'll see you tomorrow morning on the wake-up call with our good friend Tatiana. Everybody have a great night. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.